Saints. For Saints' first friendly of a 2018-19 season. We kicked off against Northampton Town at Clarence Park today on the 7th of July with a 4-0 defeat uh, against Dean Austin's side. Before we get stuck into that, Ian, if we, uh, we're talking to the City Manager and Anderson, of course, before we get stuck into that, can we just look back at the players who have left during the summer? Uh, in all, it's about seven, but I guess three we know already going. Um, I'll let you run through the list if you like. Oh, if you want to start with Charlie Walker, um, I think with Charlie had a chat with him towards the middle of March, really, and um, he was obviously expressing that he wasn't playing enough football, which I understand. We only played one up front last year. Um, he was looking to move back towards Brighton Way, so the travelling was going to be too much for him, so there was a decision really made that time of year. Um, Tom Gardner, uh, I made Tom an offer, um, but to him it wasn't, it wasn't enough. Um, and he was obviously free to go and speak to whoever he wanted to. He went and obviously spoke to Wildstone and done a deal with them. Uh, Reese Muriel Williams, um, we made him an offer, um, but I think he had, had his head turned at the fact is that there might be a conference side or a, a football league side that would be interested in him. So um, we stayed in touch during the summer, but I think, and I'm not sure if it's been confirmed yet, but I know Barnett were looking to sign him, and I know he was looking to sign for Barnett, so whether that's happened, I'm not sure. Um, Sean Lucian, um, again I asked Sean, I invited Sean back for pre-season training, I felt the returns we'd had from Sean last year, we needed more from him and, and the one thing I did say to him was that I needed to see a reaction in, in, uh, in pre-season and uh, he got offered an, uh, a deal by Hampton um, and I wasn't in a position I felt to offer him uh, a deal until I'd seen him come back in pre-season and show us that he wants to get back to the level he was the year before. So. That's really, I think Jamie Sendall's white was only a, a deal till the end of, of the season, so that as soon as the last game was done, you know, he was obviously going to go and look, he wants to get back into being um, full-time football, which is his prerogative at the end of the day. Um, and then there's two more, David, if you want to tell me uh, about Harvey, Bradbury and Lane well, Easy. Well, Lane um, felt that his time in terms of playing was was cut short in terms of the way we played, so he enjoyed playing at Wingate Finchley and he wanted to go and... Um, played for them. I actually invited him back, felt he could do a job for us this year, but he decided to go there and obviously Harvey Bradford's a, a Watford player, so we took him on loan and his loan ended. Um, I know they're keen to get him back out, but it's a decision we're going to have to make over the next couple of weeks before the season starts. So, quite a, you know, it wasn't massive in terms of where we was, but it was, you know, I just felt we needed to, to try and change personnel a little bit and try and improve from where we've been. Um, what about Kieran mon yeah? Kieran was offered a new deal um, and he's been offered re-engagement terms, we, we don't know, he turned them down um, and then we have to see where he is um, when a club decides to sign him, I don't know, he feels he's better than this standard, feels he can play a little bit higher than this standard and again that's his prerogative so we'll have to just wait and see but the club will be in a position where they can, where they can ask for a fee for him. So that's something we'll decide, or the team that he decide, decide uh, to sign for will have to come and speak to us before they're allowed to uh, put him on a contract. But again, it'd be one of them that will have to negotiate a deal or end up going to the FA and they make a decision on our behalf. Today we saw a lot of trialists for the match against Northampton Town, but to date you've signed just three players, all from Hendon. Well, um, when you say all from Hendon, um, Cal de Costa come from Concord. Uh, two out of three. Uh, so, um, but he, he was at Hendon, so I understand what you're saying. David DeHaye and, and Luke Tinsley. Um, and obviously we've got people like Ben Hurd, Tom Gardner, um, Dean Snedker, Tariq Moore, David Noble, um, Sam Merson. So the majority of the squad's there from last season, and then them three have just given us a little bit more in terms of, of what we needed. I think Luke Tinsley can play anywhere across the back four or centre midfield, which gives us an option there. Um, David uh, can play... Anyway, in the midfield or back four, he seemed today, I felt he came in was, was a colossus at the back there until he made his mistake for their, for their third goal. But he can also play in midfield. And obviously Cal uh, can play right wing, left wing or in the, in the pocket. So um, it's just something, that, you know, once we lost Reese and once we lost Sean, we needed to bring one or two players in just to replace them. And, and Cal was, you know, he'd done a great job at Concord last year. So coming in, he's been great in pre-season. He looks really sharp in pre-season training. Um, but it's been difficult because we've just come off of three very hard training sessions. Um, we've gone straight into a game against a, a pro side that are already 12 days into a, a session. Um, 
already had a game on Tuesday and then looking to go to Spain next week for a week. So they looked a little bit sharper than us early on. I was disappointed with the goals we gave away, but they're all areas that we can work on. I was really impressed with one or two players and some of the trialists that have come in and showed that you know there might be players for us for the future. Um, but we need to see how we go after the you know, as I said before, we've got four more games now in the next eight days and we've got to have a look at these players before we make a decision on making the squad a lot smaller and sticking with what we've got and uh, then trying to plan and prepare for the start of the season. Playing in this heat, it's difficult for players to impress, but quite sensible. You gave everybody, just, apart from the goalkeeper, just 45 minutes each. And that was the plan. I mean, you know, some of the trialists we brought in today, even in training, we, we probably don't think they're going to be good enough, but, you know, the only thing was today was to use you know, 22, 23 players because, as you said, it's 30 degrees out there. Um, Northampton changed everybody at half time, and if we're if we're giving players longer than 45 minutes today, we'll be we'll be risking some of their health in terms of um, the heat, in terms of where the body is. So you see the players sweating in there now. So we have to just be careful that we don't ruin them at this stage of the season. And the thing is, with it, they're saying that the heat's going to be here for another sort of 10, 14 days. So the next four games, you know, we'll we'll switch it around, have a look at some trialists have a look at some of the players, but just make sure they're ticking over and then in the last sort of two and a half weeks of the season we'll cut the squad right down to 18 and then really concentrate on what we've got to do for the start of the season. Is there anything in particular, yeah, you're looking at us when you've got the trailers, is it one thing in particular or is it a sort of full package deal? I think it's a full package, Neil. I mean, you know, we, defensively we've got to improve on last year because we conceded too many goals. Um, I think a lot of the trialists today probably tried a little bit too hard and there was a lot of um, flicking and twisting and showboating in terms of what they're trying to show us but you know in, in terms of where I am I'd rather them just show me a lot of hard work and endeavour and when they get the ball they move the ball quick and keep the ball and then when they lose it they work back I felt today second half in the last 20 minutes we didn't really work hard enough once we lost the ball we changed the shape when it went to 3-0 we went to 3 at the back and for the personnel we had today it was always going to be a a trouble in terms of what we was trying to do because we had a lot of forward players on the pitch in that last sort of 20 minutes. And I think you see enough in the first half that you know we weathered the storm first ten, first eight minutes really could have got in front we hit the crossbar and had a couple of good chances in the first half and certainly in the second half we've had two or three half chances we've not converted them but we did create a lot of chances today which was a good thing defensively we still look we've got a lot of work to do in terms of that but that will come as the games come thick and fast. And you mentioned earlier on just uh, you played one up front last season. Is it in your head maybe to try different things or are you looking to fit players to certain positions? I think there's certain games you have to play certain teams but um, you know we wasn't poor on the goal scoring front last year so we have to be careful that we don't undo all the good work we did last year but certainly um, we need to try and, and, and if we can't get two up front maybe play with the one and one so one sitting in the pocket and one up front um, but what personnel, you know we've had four, four or five different players today, Sam's come on and and look sharp and look bright and we've had two or three trialists out there as well so and they all look quite sharp and quite bright but it's so difficult to tell how well you've done against a, a football league side so you know it's something that you know they got relegated last year I think didn't they down into the division two so you know a lot of their players would have played in division one last year championship division one so it's difficult and you see in the first half they were a big side strong powerful um, but I still felt we caused them a few problems. Um, as I say, we had three or four good chances. I think Zane Banton's had two one-on-ones and pulled them both wide of the post. So lots of positives, um, a few negatives, uh, and a few areas we have to go and work really hard on. But that will come once we get these next four games out of the way. Unsurprisingly, Ian, the pitch was quite parched in places. And if we look at our uh, watering system, it wouldn't look out of place on the Antiques Roadshow. It's, ideally, you want a nice lush pitch for the start of the season, but we're not going to get it, are we? Well, not with the weather. I mean, it's just one of those crazy summers, it seems, at the moment, where you look at everywhere um, and it's very, very difficult to, to, to look for greenness. I think the pitch, considering what the water system is like, and as I said to you there, it is very, very low on pressure. We can't get any pressure through to the water. The pitch is looking magnificently well. I walked across it after the game and there's a lot of grass out there, but it just needs water. It just needs rain. We could do a real good thunderstorm now, literally now, and let it just settle down because there's lots of grass, it wants to grow, it wants to come through, and once it gets cut, it will obviously grow again, but there's a lot of areas on there that need a lot of water on it, but unfortunately with the water system we have, we just can't get pressure all over the pitch. And we're relying on, as I say, you know, Lee and, and John have done a fantastic job to get this pitch to the level it is now, because 
as I say, the last two or three weeks we've had no rain whatsoever and it's been very, very tough. And if you look at all the sides of the roads, every pitch you look at is, is it's literally brown and it's bare and it's uh, it's been a hard, hard summer for a lot of people and it's going to be tough if we don't get any rain over the next couple of weeks. By the time most people see this interview, Ian, they will know the result of the England-Sweden game. Do you want to make a prediction? It's a tough one. I actually think it'll be a 1-0 or a 2-1, um, but it's going to be a tough, tough game. I was looking at their record over the last sort of 18 months and it's, it's outstanding. When you look at that, that they see Holland off twice in, in the qualifying groups, then they beat um, Italy in the playoffs in terms of keeping a clean sheet in two games. And then they've just won their group. So, you know, a group that included Germany. And I know Germany weren't as quite to the level as it was. And I know Germany beat Sweden. But it's going to be a tough, tough game. But, you know, when you've got momentum going for you and you really believe in what you're going to do, um, I think there's going to be a tough game. I think a 1-0 or a 2-1. But hopefully it'll be enough for us to go into the semi-finals next Wednesday. Lovely. Thanks so much. And we're all back here on Tuesday night. That's the 10th of July. Stevenage are the visitors. And another friendly kickoff is at 745